You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your host, Thomas Ahrens. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle, located in Winchester, Virginia, and Shallow Water Fishing Adventures Baits, online, located in Mount Airy, Maryland. If that doesn't get you jacked up, I don't know what will. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back to Monday Night Live. I think this is episode like 61. So we have done a Monday Night Live for 61 Mondays. It's It's been an absolute... I, I can't believe how well this show was actually received on a Monday night. Uh, I was thinking about doing Fridays because there were openings, but the plan, problem is I'm always fishing or busy with the family. And Monday or Tuesday was when I wanted to do it to do a recap. I remember like the sports junkies and Grant and Danny when they're on the radio. Monday was the day that you could just really soak in and bitch about the Redskins and really recap all the sporting events that happened. And so that's kind of what I've wanted to make this show more and more when I do this is not just a fishing report or something, but just kind of recap of what's going on in Virginia, Maryland. But this one's going to be a little different because we had a cool tournament on the upper Potomac River. Last year, you had the smallmouth bash extravaganza, I believe. I'm sorry if I got the, uh, the wording incorrect on that. And you could pick from the Rappahannock, the Shenandoah, or the upper Potomac. This year was a little different, though. This year, Mike and and the powers that be at NVKBA said, like, what we're going to do is we're going to have two tidal river events, we're going to have three lake events, and then we're going to have two smallmouth events. An insanely balanced schedule. The first smallmouth event was the Shenandoah River Challenge, and this one here was on, I think, really a a mystical place for a lot of people that people weren't aware of, which was the Upper Potomac, specifically the part from Great Falls all the way to Harper's Ferry, that portion there. Uh, Of course, as you guys know, I live above that a little bit at Williamsport. There was over 41 anglers that competed with 179 fish caught, and that was in a drought, a massive drought. I know that this place has really good smallmouth. I'm on the board. I've, I've, we know about the stocking Maryland has done. We know the weights that are put up in jet boat tournaments, and I was hoping that it would show off and maybe make people excited to go back here next year. And I'm with a guy tonight who who figured it out a little bit, and he caught a really, really good bag of a smallmouth. So without further ado, the winner of the NVKBA event, stop number, I forget, six or seven on the Upper Potomac. <laughs> uh, Carrie, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Hey, I'm happy to be here, and uh, thanks for having me. No, nah, dude, I really appreciate you uh, getting back to me in such short notice. Um, I mean, really, with, without further ado, like, how long have you been fishing and kayak fishing before? Uh, just over a year now at this point. So I wow. started last season with NBKBA. So that's a, how did you get in it? Uh, so uh, another member of the club, Josh Gray, uh, a good friend of mine that I served with in the Marines, he's the one that introduced me to it. It took me out kayak fishing one day and, uh, you know, let me borrow one of his kayaks and I fell in love with it is it's easy to get out on the water, you know, very, uh, transportable, like just throw it in the back of your truck and go, uh, you don't need a whole trailer or anything like that. So let me borrow his kayak for a while, use it a few times. And I think I want to get into this and get my own kayak so I can do what I want to it. So, Mm -hmm. well then what was your first kayak or what were you running this year? Uh, so my first kayak was an Ascend 10 T and, uh, I got that, you know, start on the lower end and, you know, see if I was really going to stick with it. And, uh, you know, I just started going all over the place with, you know, trying to trick it out, you know, modify it, um, you know, running into issues with, you know, not being able to get where I needed to in a, in a timely manner and always fighting the current. So this season, uh, towards the end of last season, I ended up buying a native uh, Propel uh, Titan. And, uh, you know, I've been running that for just a little over a year now. Now, for the people that aren't aware, uh, the native Propel, is that, did you put a Torquedo, is there an electric motor on that, or is it just pedal operated? So it comes, you know, with the pedal operation, but I ended up putting uh, a Newport vessel on on the back of it, so the NK-180. Mm, okay, yeah, that's a game changer, especially when you're dealing with rivers. Yeah, it, it uh, definitely came in handy on Saturday, um, you know, going back up current, because it... Um, I think I, I mentioned it at the award ceremony on Saturday that I went out Friday and, uh, bit off a little more than I can chew, didn't bring the motor out and, uh, found myself pedaling for four hours back to the boat ramp. So, oh my God, your calves, <laughs> I, I had to stop once or twice and just stand up. So, I mean, I, I had a, let's see, this is my second of second. Oh crap. No, I'm sorry. This is my third event with the Torquedo, but the Potomac river, the title 
I was pedal operated and I, I pedaled my butt across Pohick Bay. And I really learned that that bay is a lot longer than you yeah. think it is. Cause by the time I was ready to fish, I was about to have a coronary cause it was, it's a heck of a drive. And you don't think about that. It, it, it's, I get the, how some people that don't have a motor be like, okay, it's just a little posh. It's just fancy. It's like, part of it's like, no, sometimes you do need it. Like it literally is, you can get caught in situations where you're going to get exhausted real quick, even foot operated. Yeah. Yeah, no, I it, it did definitely notice that on a uh, Friday when I was going back up river and uh, just thinking to myself, you know, after I saw the water level of where I was at, I could have totally had the motor on here and uh, would have made this a lot easier. So probably would have still taken me about two hours, but <laughs> I wouldn't have been as tired. So. Let's really just before we get into, you know, this event, like a little, uh, you know, mile high view of your season so far uh i, mean, I guess we start with lake anna tidal potomac and so on and so forth what was the first event that you fished this year uh, so i wasn't able to fish lake anna uh due to some schedule conflicts so um the second trail stop so i fished every every one of them since then um so the shenandoah uh, occoquan what was the second one i don't even remember them all off the top of my head at this point but uh i I've done better this year than I did last year, uh, to say the least. Um, at least being able to put something on the board during each tournament. So, what adjustments did you make mentally? I think it's just uh, time on the water that really uh, played a huge part in it. Uh, fishing with other guys, uh, Josh Gray, Christian Tetzlaff, Scott Hill, uh, quite a bit, and just picking little things from each one of them. You know, kind of different techniques or you know, just constantly talking about fishing with them, new uh, types of lures, stuff that I've never used before, things I've never caught fish on and kind of forced myself to, to use them and to get better with them. So it's really important to keep your mind completely like inundated with it. It really is. And it's a unique sport and guys in the comment section, I'd like to hear your thoughts on this, where it's not just time on the water, but it's your mindset off the water I, I and i think there's a balance of those two halves because you could be a very technically correct angler you can skip you can tie all the knots but is your mind actually in the game and i think that's so important that when you start surrounding yourself with a friend group that all you guys do is talk about fishing and the patterns and stuff that alone will give you a, a good advantage yeah so like I, i'd never used drop shot before uh until like towards the end of last year and tried it out and fell in love with it i was like well, wow this is this is awesome you know like I don't know why I've never used this before, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and I started catching more fish, uh, just, you know, using the right techniques and, you know, types of lures during the right times of the season. So a lot of research and, you know, watching videos or watching the fishing, the DMV, quite a, a bit of that and learning from everyone that comes on the show. Oh, I, I think we have, we have, we have over, uh, over promoted the upper Potomac and the tidal Potomac. That's for absolutely sure on the show. Terrible at fishing. Uh, what did I miss? Dude, you have not missed anything. If you're new to this, this is Monday Night Live. This is our guest, uh, 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 Kerry Timms. He won the NVKBA, NVKBA event. I hate acronyms. Uh, on the upper Potomac River this past Saturday. And we're kind of just going through his season right now. Um, you know, he tidal Potomac River. Then you had the Shenandoah event. Then you had the first Battle of Five Lakes, uh, which was Sleeters, Occoquan Reservoir, Burke, um, Lake Frederick. I, I keep forgetting that because somebody decided to fish that, which is impressive. And Germantown Lake, I think was that one. Um, and really, that's something I want to bring up to you. Like, how did you do in that event, the Battle so of Five Lakes? I ended up fishing Occoquan. Um, Smart. And I pushed way out uh, as far as I could, kind of, you know, beat the rush, get to an area where, you know, not really anybody was going to be at. And, um, you know, I found this nice little cove that had a lot of shade in it because it was hot that day. And I remember the water got up well over, uh, you know, like 90, 91 degrees very quick. And, uh, so I found a cove that, you know, it kept shade in it, you know, for the majority of the day. And that's where I caught every single one of my fish that I was able to put on the board. As soon as I ventured outside of that, uh, I noticed the bite started to stop. So I went, you know, around some other areas and then I found myself back in that cove again, just seeing if I could, you know, scrounge anything else up, you know, for the rest of that day. And I think I was only put three on the board for that tournament. But, uh, you know, for, for myself, that was pretty good. So 
Aquaquan Reservoir, I, if you pick that, like, you really were making a good calculated decision because Aquaquan Reservoir, bar none, has probably the most big fish in it out of any of the lakes in that one. I didn't have Burke Lake on my bingo card, honestly, of like, oh, yeah, that would be the lake people would win at, honestly. Uh, that that shocked me. But Aquaquan, the other thing with Aquaquan is weird. Is it's just, it's big as hell, and there's not a lot of boat ramps. So you really need to pick your spot, um, and hopefully you're not burning too much electricity getting there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fish Burke, too, and I've never had any luck on it. Like, you know, a couple here and there, but you know, nothing that made me think that that's where I wanted to fish a tournament. So. But uh, how 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 was the uh, Shenandoah event for you? Uh, I think I was able to put two on the board. Uh, you know, we pre-fished it a week and a half prior to that, and uh, it was very well. I would say very similar. It rained while we were out there, but it didn't rain like it did during the tournament. So it was a kind of a torrential downpour through the whole tournament um, mm. that day. But uh, we found an area uh, over there by uh, Ko uh, Launch. I think it's what it was called. And uh, it was pretty easily uh, easy to traverse it going upstream because you had a little bit of depth until you got to the first rapids. So um, we kind of just stuck around there, launched from there, and took out from the same launch site. So. It is interesting with that event. Uh, I mean, it was an absolute deluge. I mean, that I was, I'm, I'm glad that they actually continued with the event, but there was a hot minute there where I was thinking like, Ooh, are we going to still be able to go with this thing? Cause it was absolutely pouring. I have never, I think swimming would have made me drier. It was so freaking wet during that event. Yeah. Um, how hard was it to get used to just fishing? Was that your first time generally fishing for smallmouth in that part of the river? Uh, last year, um on the upper potomac was my first time like really like truly going smallmouth fishing um did did horrible during that tournament the i caught one fish and it was like 3 30 like well after the the tournament had ended but i was still going downstream to the boat launch where we were taken out at so <laughs> i just kept fishing um but um the shenandoah this past event uh this year was the first time i'd ever fished it before um Love, love the river. It's, it's great. It's got a ton of fish in there. We, during pre-fish, we probably caught, you know, 30 to 40 fish between two of us and just wow. kind of going down through and, you know, hit two different areas and they were both really promising. So we, you know, identified a technique that was working, you know, a bait that was, you know, attracting them. And, uh, you know, just, I think with all that rain, I don't know if that's what kind of, you know, put them into a weird phase, but, you know, we just weren't able to really get a hold of them, you know, on a game day. So, well, that leads us to this event here, Upper Potomac. How did you practice for this one? Um, and, and did it feel like was there a lot of resources? I mean, besides this channel and stuff, did you feel like this was a a well known event? Do you think there was a lot of mystery going into this about how it would play? I I, I definitely thought it it was going to be a lot tougher than it panned out for me. Um, given last year, uh, we, we launched, uh, just a little bit, uh, past Brunswick and, uh, floated all the way down to Monocacy. So it was a long float and just That's didn't do well at all. And, uh, so I was, you know, kind of looking at, you know, the, the river and kind of figure out an area like, Hey, I can launch here and I can, you know, take out. Cause I knew I was probably going to be doing it by myself, not you know being partnered up with somebody. And, and I wanted to go somewhere that, you know, I hadn't heard a lot of people talking about going to. Uh, and uh, so kind of preparing for it that way, um, you know, and through the one of the previous episodes with shallow water fishing, was, is it Josh Green? Mm -hmm. and, Jeff uh, Green, yeah. Jeff Green, sorry. And, um, you know, listening to that, you know, it sounded like, you know, y'all mentioned is either going to be one between Point of Rocks um, somewhere around like Point of Rocks and up or Algonquian and, you know, down. And, uh, so I looked at the Monocacy, you know, and I thought that, Hey, there's this good spot right here that I think I can go test it out and, uh, you know, see if it does well for me on, um, pre-fish. And it did. I had a great pre-fishing day, you know, on Friday, right before. And, uh, you know, so I stuck with that and, 
Yeah, and and I I thought about that episode a lot when I said like, is it Pointer Rocks up or Algonquin? And I thought after that stream, I was like, Tom, you just named the whole damn section that the damn tournament was at. It's like that did not narrow anything down at all. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess my thought is there, and and guys, I'll, I'll get more in depth to this tomorrow night on our Patreon uh, members only stream, but. Brunswick and up, it's a lot of great water if there's enough water. And that was kind of my concern. And I looked at it in practice where I just didn't know if there was enough water from Brunswick on up to really fish that area. I, I know there's a lot of people that have done, and I've done well there in the past, when a kayak, when you go past that in that super shallow water, and if you have like another 12 inches of water, it really concentrates them in obvious places. Um, I, I think the Potomac is interesting because the Shenandoah is very, very textbook river fishing 101 you have a riffle and then you have a pool and then you have some a riffle you have a pool and there's a lot of rock sticking out of the water it's very like you don't need electronics or anything like that you just boom boom, boom pinpoint your stuff the potomac there's big stre stretches that are insanely wide like the susquehanna and there's not always rock sticking out of the water there's massive boulders but they're underneath the water you can't see them in like three to four feet so you, it it gives an advantage to old river rats that have those boulders marked, unlike the Shenandoah, where I think anybody, generally speaking, can go out there and you can visually see the good stuff. With all that said, in this event, were you planning on just doing a float or were you planning on working up? So I, I really just kind of, through pre-fish, I kind of did a float and then you know, I was going to work my way back up, you know, to kind of test out, you know, this other area. And, uh, you know, by the time I realized like I need to start heading back to the ramp, it ended up, I just ended up doing a float, not actually coming up from, you know, where behind the boulders and, you know, and doing it like kind of textbook how you should on a river. And, uh, but the, the area that I went to, it was, it was wide enough that I could, you know, kind of ride one side of the, of the river and then almost cast to the other side, of, you know, into the areas that I needed to. So I, I don't feel like I was uh, spooking the fish too much, you know, being on, you know, on the far, you know, opposite side of it. So I was able still to kind of, you know, keep them where they were, were in play and then, you know, fish, you know, fish uh, cast to them, like, you know, where they were at. So, um, and it, and it did did pretty well. I think I caught anywhere of about nine to ten fish on pre-fish day, um, and so I was pretty comfortable with that area. And and, uh, and I didn't hit it really hard, like spending a lot of time in it. Um, I as soon as I'd catch them, I'd toss them on the board real quick just to get a rough measurement, and then I'd stick them back in the water, trying not to, you know, overpressure them and uh, you know shock them too much. Is I for a couple of those, I was like, I need you to be back here tomorrow when I come back through here. Mm -hmm. So, um. well, let's get into your tournament day then. When you got to the ramp, were you by yourself? Was there a lot of people around you? I was the only person that was at that boat ramp. Um, That's a good vibe. <laughs> that was either good or it could have been bad. The you know, telltale sign that, hey, this is not the place to be. Mm -hmm. um, had I not been there, you know, the day before. But uh, I talked about it on Saturday is um, it's uh, Piscataway. I think that's how you pronounce it. Boat launch um, or, you know, ramp access is really what it is, because there's not a launch there like a, you know, pay path or anything that, where you can back a trailer down into it. It's you're going down a set of steps or sliding your kayak down a rail to a wooden platform. And then you're having to just basically go over the side of this wooden platform, you know, this walkway down a hill like right into the water and uh but it, it was it was manageable you know by myself going down um coming back up was a different story but uh so i got there you know super early in the morning got everything set up you know carried everything down piece by piece got in the water and started heading to my spot where you know i was knew i was gonna start from and i got there a few minutes early and i pulled off to the side and finished drinking my coffee and waiting for six o'clock alarm to go off yeah like that's that's a good i i i feel you 100 percent on that like are you are you out thinking in the room playing 40 chess when you're the only person there or are you so far off in left field that you don't even see home plate um but yeah having that morning vibe of you you're not in a rush you get there early you're ready to go 
were you just going to, it sounds like this is correct. I just want to make sure I'm right. Launch and start fishing, or are you going to get in the water and start heading to your spot early? So, yeah, I got in the water and started heading to my spot early. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, so I think I was on the water by about five forty-five, and mm. heading over to it. So when did things start clicking? Uh, like after, after six o'clock, is that what you're asking? Yeah. When did the fish start getting in the kayak? About six Oh five was the first one. <laughs> Dang dude. Uh, it, the first couple casts, um, and uh, they were they were attacking it right off you know, as it's hitting the water, um, you know, kind of hiding off in you know some of that shallow water with, where the grass was at, and uh, so I think I the first spot I stopped at, I was getting bites like every two or three casts, and so I was able to get hooked up on a couple of them, and you know got them over in, into the kayak and you know got them submitted. And uh, just kind of going back and forth, just in this one little area, and I uh, spent probably about an hour and a half there, because it was just, you know, felt like it was producing, and uh, you know, I eventually kind of moved on further a little down the down the area, and uh, and it stayed very consistent throughout the day, I would say, um, which was a very nice feeling. It just, um, you know, if it was eight or nine inches, but it was, they were, they were still biting throughout the day. So how was the top water bite for you? Cause it's interesting that it seems like half the field had a top water bite and the other half didn't, but we were all in the same river. Yeah. I didn't even throw anything top water. Um, really? Yeah. I, from wh when I started, um, I knew like throwing top water through there would have been, you know, pretty bad unless I was throwing like a frog, but, um, I, not very good at fishing with frogs. So I kind of steer away from them. Um, go to, you know, my comfort zone and, you know, throwing a, like a craw, just a weightless craw. Hmm. And, uh, so I knew that that would also carry in the current as well, you know, a little bit. And, and that seemed to kind of also help, um, you know, with that early morning bite in such shallow water too. So how thick was the grass? Like, I'm just trying to get a visual for it. Was it just, it wasn't matted. Like I think, I think you said earlier, was it, like get your trolling motor caught up and stuck kind of thick. Yeah. Th there were some areas where it was pretty thick. And, uh, you know, when I was at about two feet of water, two to two and a half, hmm. um, there were some areas and then it, it would open up and there'd just be no grass. And then I'd run into you know another area that had a little bit of grass, but yeah, right there at the first part of it, I had tons of grass where I was at. Were you specifically targeting the thicker mats or like, what was the thought process there in, in your cast and your decision-making? Uh, so kind of first off, I was just, you know, trying to get a feel for, you know, uh, if they were going to be interested in, you know, what I was using the day before. And I uh, just kind of started tossing it out there, like towards that grass. Cause you know, that'd really be the only area that they're holding, you know, in cover. And the day prior, I kind of just floated through that area, you know, not thinking that I was going to fish it. And I noticed like there's little pools, you know, right under, you know, in some of those areas that, you know, drop down to, you know, two and a half to three feet, just a small little pocket. And I'd see two bass just take off, you know, just that I would end up spooking and scaring off. So I knew coming into it on Saturday that I was going to stop ahead of all that and, you know, stick to that shoreline, drag the kayak and, you know, get on the shoreline and then, you know, fish over in those areas where I remember kind of seeing a lot of those pools. So smart really smart what size line were you using and what was your setup with that crawl and with that grass so i was using uh on a bait caster just uh a braided line with a like an eight pound uh floor uh floor carbon leader on it and uh you know just tying that on to you know a, you know a hook with you know with the screw lock just because i know that they would tear everything up um even they, they still did. I almost ran out of craws while I was out there. <laughs> Same. I, I'm get. I was getting stuff together for uh, the the Patreon stream tomorrow, going through baits, and I realized I ran through two packs of trailers. Like I was like, "Good lord!" And the screw lock hook. I don't know what happened in my childhood where I didn't use those, but the past year I've used them way more because they're just it, they hold baits better. They really do. Yeah, it helps preserve them, so you can use it. Mm -hmm. You know, through 
you know, three or four more fish, you know, and a lot of times you, the first fish you ke- uh, get hooked up on with that, without it, they're ripping that off the, you know, the head of the hook. And, you know, now you're replacing that, you know, that uh, bait, you know, more often, I think. So. Especially in smallmouth tournaments, I feel like that happens more because it's not only the little smallmouth that are there's habitual in the Shenandoah and the Potomac that they'll rip the bait, but there's so many blue, like sunfish, uh, goggle eye, which are rock bass. And there's so many things that will pluck a bait compared to other places that we fish. I get, again, just anecdotal, but yeah, I, I 100% agree with that. It, this is something I'm going to, I want to bring up. Do you, do you, you use your drag? I'll first of all preface it with this. Do you use your drag on your, on your reels when you're fighting those big small mouth? No, I, uh, I get so hyper focused on just getting them to the boat. Um, I just start reeling and, you know, and then when I feel like, you know, them really pulling, I'll kind of let them pull. Um, but I'm not, I'm not real big and I would say I probably need to practice and get better with it, but being able to adjust it on the fly. Um, but I just get so, you know, caught up in the moment i just start reeling and you know getting them to the boat as quick as i can so it's something that's interesting guys let me in the comment section below i feel like the harder you pull on a small mouth the more he's going to jump and i feel like when i'm throwing bait caster stuff uh and this is something that that's that hasn't plagued me a lot in the past but it reared its ugly head in this event when you have bait caster equipment you set the hook on a small mouth i think i personally subconsciously feel like i have the ability to horse them more but they also are going to jump way more. Um, if you're fishing a spinning rod on eight pound fluorocarbon, whatever you have your drag set, I feel like they don't jump as much because they'll just pull on the drag and wear themselves out. But when you really try to like play tug of war with a small mouth, that's 15, 16, 17, 18 inches, they're going to go They're They're going to jump. And that's when you're going to have your heartbreak. Yeah. Yeah. I, I had a couple like that on Saturday that, um, you know, would have helped me cold that, you know, a couple of the yeah. smaller ones that I, you know, ended with, but, uh, yeah, I jump and spit, spit it right back at me, you know, and it just breaks your heart and just, oh, dude. just, you know, I ain't got to cast back out there and, you know, keep going. So I, I don't, I, and it's funny, the fight doesn't even end then. Like I, I would love to know with just from everyone in VKBA, I feel like you lose more small mouth in the kayak measuring than you do large mouth. I don't know how many people have probably, I, I, guilty here but it's just yeah. insane that they never give up and we got ben ben in this the comment section uh stand uh standing up with the rod tip up the fish were coming way out of the water sitting or keeping the tip low kept the fish from jumping for me there you go yeah so yeah it's it's not just me that 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 saw that that yeah it, it's it's insane um they just really man they wanted to jump something awful this past event more so than than anything else as soon as they get into the, as soon as they get into the kayak, they start, you know, panicking, you know, they just start going mm-hmm. all over the place. And, and I learned my lesson, uh, the hard way on the Shenandoah, um, early in the morning, about eight o'clock. And I got a hole of one, probably 18 inches and, you know, good size and got him to the boat, boat flipped him, stuck him in there. And with one shake, he shook the hook out and the other shake, he was back into the water and just, and I'm standing there with my hand on my head, just shaking and you know one of my buddies is behind me and he's like rooting me on and he's like what are you putting him back in the water for and then he realized what happened and he's, he's like oh man that's not good <laughs> yeah hey, greg i had two jump off the board maddening yeah i had i had one jump off the board i had one in my hand and i remember and this will I'll, I'll show the video tomorrow night but i remember i exchanged him to this hand and i was trying to put my rod away and as i did that I thought it was still on the kayak. Nope. I put my hand out away from the kayak when I did that, and he twisted right in the damn drink. Um, a friend of mine did message me after the fact. He said, like, keep them in your net. If you have a net with a big net area, just leave them in the net and the water, and they'll be chill. I need to try that trick because, yeah, that, yeah, you can't lose, especially when you get – if you guys don't know the Shenandoah and the Potomac, you will catch a lot of fish. They might all be 11 inches, but you'll catch a lot of fish. It's weeding through to get those those golden nuggets. And when you get them, you can't lose them. Um, yeah, no, I, I completely feel that there with that. When did you feel like you had a chance? Um, was there a certain fish that you're like, okay, now I got something kind of going? Uh, I think through when I hit my first, when I hit my fifth fish, 
it, it felt great because that was the first time I've ever got a full bag during a tournament. And I was just, you know, happy to be, you know, catching five fish on the tournament. And, uh, you know, and at that time it was still fairly early in the morning. Yeah. I kind of think to myself, I was like, I can do, I, I think I could do pretty well in this. Um, you know, given that I've already, you know, got my fifth one and, uh, and I've still got the better part of the stretch where I did a lot better during pre-fish. So, and I was thinking, I was just kind of thinking to myself, like, hey, it'd be awesome to finish top 10. Like that would, you know, that would tickle me to death, you know, to be able to, you know, be up there. Um, you know, especially with the guys that we're competing with, um, you know, Victor Hendricks, Chun Ri, like I, I knew I had, I was going up against them and, uh, and yourself that, uh, you know, I, that, that was my biggest, I was think my threat, you know, that, uh, I was concerned about, you know, competing against. So Victor is great everywhere. And I would never want to see Chun on a small mouth roof. <laughs> so, I, I joked with him. I thought we were just going to all be donating to Chun again. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, my first, uh, what was it? I think seven fish were all, you know, 15 or under, uh, you know, a couple of 13s, a mm. uh, couple of 12s, you know, squeaking out of 12 here and there. Um, you know, so I was sitting, I think fairly decent. And then, uh, I kind of shifted, you know, to stick into the shade line, uh, when this, when it was about noon, it got pretty hot, you know, warmed up pretty, pretty, pretty quick. Water temperature was, you know, pretty, uh, pretty high. But uh, it was still real shallow and not a lot of boulders or anything. So I stuck kind of over to the, the shoreline where the shade was. And uh, yeah. and uh, I caught like a nine inch over there and I had a couple little bites. So I was like, all right, they're, they're sitting in the shade. And then uh, and I had one that hit it like a freight train. And, and I knew it was big. And I said, like, this is the one. Like, I need this. I need this to, to happen. And uh, we got him to the boat and he surfaced. And I, I was like. This is a 20, 21 inch. You know, I was hoping that was the 19 uh, and three quarters that I got. And, uh, did he jump right away or did he just dog you? He just kind of dog me. He was trying to pull me all over the place. I dropped my anchor down real quick to, you know, kind of, you know, control it. And, uh, but, um, you know, finally got him in the net and, uh, you know, and kind of like what you're talking about is like putting him back in the net and, you know, letting him chill out. So I have, uh, two of fish fish lip grips um you know the, the regular ones and then like the smaller ones and i had both of those in him in the water you know with my hand kind of just uh, i was you're not getting away and uh, how, how much do you trust those things we, we we got a donkey leash they can calm down while you're getting i dude do they work because i feel like if the money's on the line i don't know how much i'm going to trust trust that yeah, thing with the big that's one. why i put two of them on him <laughs> So, Fair enough. Um, one of them kind of cinches down the other ones, you know, they kind of, they can open back up if you don't wrap that, that leash around them, you know, properly. I've had that happen before and, uh, you know, learn my lesson the hard way and I look down and it's gone and, I'm like, mm. oh. and, and then you know, started using the net, you know, uh, idea and that's helped a lot and gets them to calm down quite a bit. I take them out of the water, get the board and everything prepped. And then I take my net, and I set it over on the side and then put the board kind of into it. And so if he starts flopping around, I can just grab it and just throw it back down on top of him and let him, you know, freak out for a minute and then stick him back in the water. Um, but uh, I, I probably took about 35 photos of him. <laughs> so doing everything I could to get him at 20 inches, but um, just never could get that, you know, last quarter inch out of him. And every time I look down, and he'd be at 20 inches at his tail. I'd look and his mouth is open a little bit and, you know, shove him a little bit further. And I could just couldn't get it. But, um, yeah, that was, that was, that was a big, uh, you know, uh, milestone, you know, the day that when I, that got in the, got that on the board. And so, I, I don't know. That was a beautiful fish. I mean, that, that's a really beautiful fish. Um, I mean, 19 inch or 18 inches, that's great. I mean, those 21s are just unicorns. They don't, they shouldn't exist. But a 19, a bag of 19, 18, you can't, it's hard to beat it. I think like so many times you look at these river tournaments, it takes like a 17 plus inch average um, to to do well. And I think compared to some largemouth events where 
maybe you have a 12 inch and you can survive with that because you have a big donkey it, it, small mouth it's like everything has to be solid which is kind of like the lake champlain or the saint lawrence river tournament same thing it's like it, it, small mouth tournaments you can't really have a dink you, you really need a solid limit all the way through for, with your best five yeah my, my my smallest and i was why i'm extremely shocked at you know winning the, the event was the smallest one i had was uh like 13 and a half and i, I didn't think that that having that on the on the board was going to really pull it out for me and uh you know in the last i saw before the leaderboard was shut off i was you know sitting somewhere i think the top five or so um and that was just after catching that that uh 19 and three quarters and uh, all i could think of so i was like somebody's gonna start dropping you know a bunch of 20s and and they're gonna have a you know a bounty Mega eight, bag and uh they're gonna crush it but um, it's hard to gauge with these things what the i keep saying weights my apologies to all the kayak anglers listening but but the inches it'll take to win these things especially with the drought because I really would have thought it would have taken close, maybe in better conditions, it would have taken 85 ish, uh, to, to, to do well, to actually win the thing. But it, it looks like the drought really affected it. And it did make the fish really funky. They just didn't stack. They didn't stack up really well. Like they usually do. And the places that they would stack when, when the water's a little bit higher, they, they just got, they get spread out and they get very finicky. Um, and I think if the wind if the conditions weren't the way they were, it probably would have been even lower. Uh, if it was like bright and sunny the whole day with not a cloud in the sky, it probably would have made the fishing a little bit harder. Yeah. Bait wise, did you stick with the crawl all day or did you have to make an adjustment to catch that 19 incher? So I ended up, uh, the day before I was primarily using like a black and blue jig with a, uh, a paddle tail on it. And, uh, that was tearing them up, you know, all over the place, small, uh, you know, larger ones too. I had a two, eight, like 18 and 18 and a quarter on pre-fish day. And, uh, so I, those are the two I was hunting for, you know, in that same area, I circled that same spot where I caught those the day before probably five times just trying to get them to resurface. Um, so I used that same, uh, black and blue, uh, jig, on saturday and until the first fish that hit it um i should have retied it you know that night before or uh the morning of first bass that hit it ripped that thing right off and that was the only one i had of that one specifically so i took threw on a different you know black and blue jig and and it, it helped it produced some you know a couple of 15s and so and um uh, everything else i was throwing is you know type of jig or a paddle tail and uh wasn't really doing it like the colors so um, you know, I remember, you know, like some of the things that, you know, Chun Ri had talked about, you know, from last year when in the event was, you know, a chatterbait and, uh, a chatterbait is definitely not my strong suit. Um, I think I've caught two fish on one before, you know, this previous week. And, uh, so I said, well, I got a black and blue chatterbait and I'll throw a paddle tail on that. And, uh, you know, let's go with that. And threw that out there and they were hitting that thing like crazy. And it just. I think that vibration was really, you know, bringing them, uh, you know, bringing, uh, getting their attention for it. So I, I, I stuck with throwing that pretty much the rest of the day and, uh, it just continued to produce. Did, were you skipping that thing shallow then into the bank? Yes. I was throwing it up on the bank. Um, you know, I was throwing it in the middle, um, kind of all over the place and, and, they, they were all hitting it, you know, in all different angles. So all different areas. That's freaking awesome. So, yeah. I mean, dude, you have your first win and I, and I believe I heard this from the ceremony. I could be wrong. This is your first limit too, correct of the year. Yes. Yeah. Look at that. Busting two cherries in one event. That's freaking awesome, man. <laughs> Thanks. What are your thoughts then going into the rest of the season? Um, I mean, I'm excited definitely for the next event. Um, so the next battle of the five lakes and, uh, you know, if I can just continue to kind of hold my own and, you know, and continue to progress, you know, as a fisherman myself, as an angler, um, you know, and, and learning, you know, from each event, you know, different techniques, different, uh, you know, weather conditions and how to fish, you know, certain types of baits, um, you know, it's just trying to improve, you know, little by little so I can, 
because I, I enjoy getting out doing it. It's a lot more fun when you're, you know, actually catching fish than mm-hmm. you know, previous tournaments where I've put up zero fish, you know, multiple tournaments in a row. Um, so, um, you know, my wife, she's always telling me, just, hey, just get out there and just remember, have fun. And it's, yeah, it's, it's all about having fun. But on tournament day, it's hard to have fun when you're not catching anything. You get mm-hmm. frustrated real quick. Preach. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, had the best day of uh you know any tournament i've ever had um you know saturday so when it's your time it's your time you know what i mean like you can't you can do everything everything right and lose and you can do some things wrong and and you know you just break right through all those glass barriers and you know carrie congratulations on on your big win today or this weekend um anything we can promote for you uh not, not that i can think of i mean no Dude, I, I really appreciate it. It was an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Again, guys, here is your winner from the Upper Potomac NVK, NVKBA event on the Upper Potomac. The next stop is Battle of Five Lakes, stop number two, Electric Boogaloo. It's going to be Abel, Nye, Hunting Run, Mooney, and some other place I think that I'm kind of missing for the fifth lake. But, you know, that's what Mike is for to tell everyone that. If you want more information, go check out NVKBA. Uh, it's a really good, it's a really, really fun organization. Great schedule. I think one of the better schedules around, honestly, when it just comes to pure balance. Um, you can't skip a smallmouth event if you want to win AOI. You have to be able to catch smallmouth, actually. So it's it's really cool. Like and subscribe to the channel. And then uh, tomorrow night around 7 p.m., we'll be doing our members-only stream. I'll be going through my breakdown, baits, and everything, that whole shebang. And we'll see you guys next time on Fishing the DMV. Bye. You're listening to Fishing the DMV with your hosts, Thomas Ahrens and Jared Mounts. Fishing the DMV is brought to you by Jake's Bait and Tackle.